Okay, we are live. Episode 133. I'm going to stand up this time. I went usually down. There's a light usually. I was having computer issues. Doesn't even matter. That's behind us. We're going into this thing, Megan Thiemann with no bait. And we have David and Bridget from Grassroots Demos. Welcome yes. to the show. Thank awesome. you. Thank Thank you. you. My pleasure. Uh, Megan, here we go. Uh, give us a story about No Baked. Uh, when did it start? What's it all about? Yeah, so we make and sell gourmet safe to eat cookie dough. We started in early 2017 in Nashville, Tennessee, and we sell in scoop shops online and soon to be retailers. Soon to be retailers, Nashville, Tennessee. There's uh, two things. Been to Nashville, really like that place, actually. Yeah, um, it's fun. It is fun. Uh, and you don't, really, yeah, anyway, uh, we'll go back to that. Um, let's talk about your current state. When you say no retailers yet, give us sort of the, the mode. Where, where are you making it and how are you distributing it if you're not in retail? Give us sort of the, 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 the details there. Yeah, so we originally started with scoop shops, like I said, so brick and mortar locations, but COVID had us do a whole entire business shift. So we put a lot of focus onto our e-com operations where we do ship nationwide via our website and Amazon. But at the moment, our main focus is in, is getting into grocery stores. So we're in a couple of local grocery stores in Nashville, Chicago, Ohio, Kentucky, and hopefully launching into more major chains on a regional level around us here. Give us the product line. Describe it a little bit better for us. Exactly what is it and, and how is it made? Yeah. So we make safety cookie dough. Um, it's sold in jars like this. We have seven SKUs total, but if you were to look in a grocery store, you would see our three most popular SKUs. So chocolate chip, brownie batter, and confetti sugar. Um, it's made with heat treated flour and with no eggs. So that's what makes it safe to eat. And all the recipes are just recipes that I made in my own kitchen when starting No Big. So we're very chef driven, focused on flavor. It's our number one company value, flavor first. We do not sacrifice that for anything. Shelf stable? It's not shelf stable, it's refrigerated. So you'd it's find in, it in like the dairy section. Understood. And, and what, yeah. is the, what is the, the shelf life on something like that? Six months refrigerated. Oh, interesting, okay, cool. Um, and yeah. and, and it, I, I just, that, that category, I could ask questions specific like that because there are different ways to make it. I know one is, for instance, like with the egg, not with the egg. Um, right. I don't believe anything of the sort can be out of refrigerator. Could it? Um, unless, yeah, could it? Uh, you would tell me. It depends on the ingredients. Um, so it depends on, you know, what your fat source is. Is it vegetable oil? Is it margarine? Is it vegan butter? I mean, there's a lot of options out there. Like I said, my main focus is flavor. So I actually use a dairy-free butter alternative, um, but it still needs refrigeration for quality purposes and for shelf life purposes and overall consistency and flavor. So there might be something on the market that doesn't need to be refrigerated. Um, but if you're thinking of you know, real cookie dough, then it should probably be refrigerated. And that's, that's how I think it is best yeah, I think quality most, wise. Most consumers know it. They're going to go to the um, sort of the, the center aisle, right? They're buying the powders mm -hmm. or whatever it is to make it, right? To physically right. make it. If they're yeah. looking at something pre-made, um, even though pre-made cookies and, and the like, you can find that in the refrigerated section. There's, you know, again, there's like a whole section for that stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. Do, do most consumers just eat it out of the jar or are they using it? Can you use it to bake things as well? I mean, give us Describe that for those that are kind of newer to, to that type of product. Yeah, 95% of our customers are eating it straight out of the jar. So literally like you buy a pint of ice cream and you eat it with a spoon. That's what 95% of our customers are doing. Um, and I did create it because I was that person who bought, you know, rolls of Toll House cookie dough and ate it, even though you weren't supposed to. So that's who our customer is. Um, you can bake it. It's just that it's not going to become the cookies that you're expecting it to. So we don't get a lot of people that do that. Um, we get people who 
mix it with ice cream, which is one of the most delicious things you can do. But besides that, you're pretty much just eating it straight. It's super, it's an indulgent item, right? You don't yeah. shy away from that. There's none of this like, I, I don't even heard you say it better for you or the like. Um, there's a lot of that in, in in that category. I'd almost say in the sweets category. Uh, yeah. Even if they're riddled with, with sugar, which again, I don't have a problem with that. I talk openly about all types of stuff when it comes to nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, do how, how do you define this? How is your story uh, defined? How what are you using as as that sort of journey for for not only the brand but the consumer listening to it? Yeah, so yeah. you bring up a great point. You know, the good for you category in CPG is huge right now, and. I mentioned, you know, we are, we are chef driven, not lab driven. And I've seen a lot of other cookie doughs on the market, literally switch their whole entire product line, their whole recipe to try to fed into this current trend or to try to be healthy. Um, but my, my life motto and with no baked, especially has always been that most things you can do in moderation, um, without seeing, you know, negative health effects from, and the healthiest, the most nutritious of people occasionally have dessert. It just is the way that it is. And um, our cookie dough is made to be a safe option for people who enjoy eating cookie dough. That's why I created it. But I won't sacrifice the flavor and the smooth consistency of our cookie dough just to fit into some kind of health trend. Um, I firmly believe that people can eat dessert and it will bring them joy. And that's kind of my goal with no big. So the, the uh, I call it balance. Um, yeah, you know, it's all, all about balance. It is balance. Um, I, I know, you know, again, I I'm open when I talk about stuff. I don't eat stuff like this, right. Yeah. It's not for any other desire. You know, I, I, I live a certain lifestyle as far as nutrition intake and what I put in my body, but I actually am one of these people um, that just don't desire it. Like it's, it's not like yeah. at the end of dinner, I feel like cake or anything like that. So I, I guess I'm lucky like that. Um, last night I just posted, like, I had a sweet tooth. I eat an orange, you know, for some, <laughs> but that's, just, but that's me. And I, I, I'm empathetic and understand the majority of consumers and how, um, they, um, react to foods or want to react to different foods. So it, it I, again, if you, if you want to indulge, you can, it, it's right. what are you doing the other 80 to 95% of the time, right? As you use exactly. 95 really high, mm -hmm. sorry folks. Um, okay. We'll go to 80%, you know, put good whole foods into your body, nutritious, dense whole foods in your body, and you can indulge, you know, you have the ice cream, you have the cookie dough, it's all good, but do it in moderation as well. We'll get back to that balance point. It's like, you, you talked about the pint, you know, the ice cream, you, you don't eat the whole pint. No. You have like a serving, you know, it's like, get, get, you know, it's, that, 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 I don't know what that sound was. I just made that up. Okay, here we go. Um, let's go to your 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 next phase is kind of going back into retail. Um, I, I we could have talked about the shops and stuff like that, but let's let's move forward, right? Post mm -hmm. post these last couple of years, um, what's the price point? I'm I'm actually interested. What's price point on shelf, and how are you dealing with uh, margin constraints right now? I'm assuming you're getting affected. Uh, some of the ingredients for sure. So. Um, yeah, like how wheat, are you with that right now? Yeah, talk talk us through that. Yeah, so first off, the price point for a pint like this, which is 16 ounces of cookie dough, would sit on the grocery shelf at about $9.99. Um, there's a range, you know, we suggest between $9.99 and $11.99, depending on the store and um, who who their customers are, basically. Um, the majority of our ingredients have not gone up in price, but you've probably heard about wheat and the demand for it and the price increase. So our, you know, the highest percentage of our cookie dough is made of heat treated wheat flour. Um, so at this point, it hasn't had a huge impact on our margins. Uh, I, I keep very close contact with the manufacturer of our heat treated flour just to see you know, if I can get a heads up, if it's actually going to go up more than it has right now, but according to them, they don't plan on changing it much. So we're just kind of eating the cost that has gone up to this point and hoping for the best. Um, I don't know what else to do at this point because things are so unpredictable. 
Well, you're, you're like many. Um, the, the comment of hoping for the best is a, is a tough one, right? To, to, <laughs> I'm so say, but also to, to listen to, because I, I talk um, about that. It's um, one of these things where it's, it's an anomaly. I mean, we've gone through things like that, this um, in, in all types of, of verticals, all types of businesses over the many, many years, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a really unique time, though. We've never seen inflation like this. Um, and we've never seen constraints like this because it's almost like happening all at once. Yeah. Um, and so when you're in a margin business that, you know, which we all are, but specific to this CPG, you know, you're, you, you defined your margin, what you need to operate. Um, and once that starts moving downward, um, because yeah. of the effects of, 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 of all of this, right? You've got to either raise your prices um, or have some other, you know, some other uh, fix for it, which there, there are others, right? Um, but it, it's, it's, we're in a unique time. So it's interesting to, to, to hear that. Um, yeah. What, what are your, what, let, let's just do this as far as, um, it's a good, good story and I appreciate all, all this context thus far. Um, give us like the next, 12 months. Um, and also, is it just yourself? I'm kind of interested in that story. And, and if there's a team, and again, what do you want to do for the next 12 months? Yeah, so I actually run Novig with my husband. So um, I started the company and he, after two months of me operating it, also quit his full-time job and jumped right in. So we've been running it together for five years. We have a very small team. Um, operations, sales, and then a manager of our scoop shops. And that's the whole entire team right now. Over the next 12 months, our goal is to get into over 1500 doors. So, um, you know, we're in probably 50 right now. Uh, so really ramping up sales. We've got manufacturing nailed down. We are ready to scale up um, as long as we can manage our cash flow. I am very positive about getting into more retailers. So that's the goal in the next year. Okay, 50 to 1500 um, <laughs> and managing cash flow. Uh, be prepared. Um, it's, it's, you know, be prepared. Scaling at that, that sort of site um, is uh, capital, um, capital is required. Uh, yeah, I imagine at some point we will raise money um, when, once we get to the run rate that we're aiming towards in the next three months. So if everything goes smoothly, then we'll be able to do it. Start now. You have to start making those contacts now. Uh, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a lengthy process and uh, you don't want to be behind the ball because if you do get activations, uh, again, it's, it's, it's capital intensive, much, yeah. much more than you even think. Um, and so uh, start now. Uh, good stuff, uh, Megan. I appreciate it. Uh, no baked. We'll get your info up at the end. David and Bridget from Grassroots Demos, give it to us. What's it all about? Awesome. It's all about demos. So uh, we're with Grassroots Marketing. What we do is we're a field marketing agency that specializes in putting compelling products into people's hands. So we offer a couple of things. To the customer, we offer a safe space to experience new items, new brands, new trends, right? Without having to risk getting burned, paying a bunch for an item that they don't like, um, and they get to offer their opinion on it and get a sample. To the brands, we offer the ability to, for both growing and established brands, we offer the ability to collect data on what their customers really do think. Real people in stores, in real in-store conditions, what they think of their items, if they like them, if they don't, what they like about them, what they don't, and offer data to back all of that up. So we collect all those, all the feedback, all the photos, all the sales information. So it's more than just a demo. It's more than just sampling product. It's also about a little bit of merchandising, a little bit of iteration assistance with market research from real people, and also sales in the stores to drive velocity for your retail accounts. So it's a range of things. That's our bread and butter. That's what we do the most of. We also offer coupon applications, POS applications, in-store audits, launch, launch support, like for a rollout, whether it's a line extension or a totally new item for brands like No Baked as they go into 50 to 1500 accounts mm -hmm. um, to help them collect feedback on what those shoppers think of their items and also to get, make sure that those items are on the shelf and staying on the shelf. 
Well, so that's, that's an overview. I, I like it. Bridget? Bridget? <laughs> Tell them about that. the team. What do we do for our team? I know, David. <laughs> what am I doing here, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I think David definitely... Um, was able to explain everything exactly what we do in, in a big scope to tell you a little bit more about what we do. I feel like as a team, we're really focused on finding brand ambassadors who are passionate about food, who care about, you know, what they're doing in stores, who take initiative. I think that's the most unique aspect of what we're doing. It's not just a staffing agency for the sake of having, you know, a warm body at a table to pass out samples. It's about that brand ambassador being educated on the product, excited about natural food, about the industry, what's coming, being able to connect to customers. Um, and I feel like another really great aspect of it too, is just that we take that the whole experience away from the brand of just handling everything for them. So we are able to do the scheduling process, communicating stores, we make it a lot easier. And I think we really help create a partnership between us, the brands and the markets themselves um, really have a really good flow to it. And I think we've been doing this for a couple of years now. And I think now we can see that there's a whole renaissance going on in this industry. And it's really exciting to see so many new up and coming brands get into more retailers and we're excited to give it to customers. Very cool. Well, well, well articulated. Uh, David and Bridget, Grassroots Demos is info is there. Megan Thiemann, No Bakes Info is there. Thank you. Have a great, healthy week. <laughs>